Uno, dos, tres. All right. TJ asked a question, how to make others not bother me? Just to be focused on myself, what is the best thing a person can do to keep themselves happy? I know the happiness is within yourself and you cannot expect anyone to make you happy. What are a few things people can do in a day to create happiness within themselves? Okay, TJ, first of all, if you're not happy, that means there is something within yourself that keeps you unhappy. Let me let me give you an example, okay? Most of the times people are not happy and they create anxiety and other kind of emotional bumps in their daily life is because they relate to what they're worth, they relate to what they perceive themselves as to something deeper. I'm going to give you an example. I'm, uh, I'm teaching general chemistry for MCAT students for Princeton Review, El Paso, Texas. This is happening while I'm getting my master's, so between 2007 and 2008. Uh, the student get, comes to me. He is literally shaking at that point. Okay. I said, what is wrong? He says, I get super, ex I, I, I create super anxiety when I'm in your class. I said, why? Is there anything that I'm doing? He says, well, I'm scared you're going to ask me a question. Would you like me not to ask you a question? Well, that will help a lot. I said, okay. The problem is not me asking you a question. The problem is a little bit deeper than that. I haven't talked. I mean, I haven't said so we can talk. And he said, um, well, if you ask me a question, if I don't know the answer, the people around me might actually think I'm dumb or I don't belong here. Okay, well, let's just say, what would happen if people think you're dumb and you don't belong here? Well, then I get into bigger anxiety and I won't be able to get good grades. Okay, let's just say you didn't get gr good grades. What would happen? Well, if I can't get good grades, I can go to the medical school and become a doctor. Okay, so what would happen if you didn't become a doctor? He looked at me. He said, I've been trying to be a doctor since I was six years old. And to take the MCAT, you either have to be a senior in a university or you have to be graduated already. So you're at that 25 to 26 year age. For the last 20 years, I've been trying to be a doctor my entire world is to be a doctor. If I can't be a doctor, my world wouldn't have a meaning to it. So right then and there, we found the problem. He correlate being a doctor to what he's worth. If he wasn't a doctor, he wasn't worth a damn. His life, entire 20 years of his life, went to waste. And like, okay, you do know there's a whole bunch of people who take MCAT. MCAT is the exam you take to get into the medical school. Um, at least to get into an interview with the medical school. You know, there's a lot of people who don't get a good score in the MCAT. Yeah. You do know they continue to live. Yeah. You do know there's a lot of people who get into a medical school and cannot make it, cannot finish it. Yeah. You do know they still live a happily ever after life. He's looking at me at this point. There's no reaction. You do know there are some people who finish medical school and have careers has nothing to do with medicine at all. So they did went to medical school, but they do some, some other thing. And they're happy and their life is worth a million because they do something more satisfying per se, or they get paid more or whatever the, the reason is, they stop being a medical doctor. So he looked at me and I said, at this point, he's just trying to understand what I'm trying to tell him. Your life is not confined in being a doctor. Your life is contained what makes you happy. You can be happy being a doctor. Those people who didn't get into a medical school because they couldn't get a good enough score in MCAT, they went and become a lawyer. 
they're perfectly happy. They become a nurse, they're perfectly happy, and they live happily ever after. They have kids, they have families. Their wor worth has nothing to do with the profession they choose or if they succeed in their profession. Their worth, your worth, is what you decide it's going to be. So what I want you to do is this. Think that it is okay if I don't get a good score in MCAT. It's okay if I don't become a doctor. I would like to be one. But if it doesn't, it's okay. Because I'm worth more than a doctor. I'm worth the universe. And whatever I set my mind to, I will do it. Now, I will fail. I will succeed. In some endeavors, I will fail. It's okay. Because no human being in the face of the planet learned how to walk without falling on their asses, without falling on their faces. Ever. And we didn't just fall once, twice. If you have any kids, you would know. If you watch the kid trying to learn, you would know. If you don't know, never seen, Google it. It is hilarious. I have two kids and... I literally watched them learn how to walk. It is a struggle for three to six months of falling, getting up, falling, getting up, never giving up. A child never gives up trying to walk because it's in their DNA. They're going to walk. The failure is not an option. Yes, you're going to fail. You're going to get your ass back up and try again. Try again. Try again until you succeed, until you get what makes you happy. Your worth is not defined around other people. It's not defined what you think it is. It's defined by what makes you happy. So after that, he came into the class. He raised his hand. He answered questions. He failed at some questions. Then he was perfectly okay with it because he didn't tie his worth he didn't tie his himself to being a doctor. He tied himself to succeed at what he's trying to do at that moment was to answer that question. Done. So if somebody is uh, talking shit to you, people going to talk shit. People are going to have opinions. Opinions are like assholes. We all got them and they all stink differently. Okay. So first of all, I have a respect for whoever it is, almost if they earn their respect, they're allowed to have their opinion. I'm not going to be the king. I'm not going to be the white shining armor, that knight that comes with a white horse. That I'm not going to be the savior of everybody. So I'm going to be a complete asshole. I'm going to be a complete dick in somebody's story. I'm okay. You need to learn to be okay with that because... That's just life. There's nothing you can change about that. I try to do my best to teach people and help people to get better with their life. But there are people who doesn't appreciate what I do. There are people who doesn't understand how I do it. There are people who don't, you don't like me because I look ugly. I don't know. It Be okay with that. Once you learn to be okay with that, you're okay with everything. There's nothing that literally... Um, can destroy your day. Lastly, I'm going to tell you a book uh, called Feeling Happy. It's by Dr. Burns. If you put feeling, feeling Happy, Dr. Burns, I think that's the name of the book. I, I, I don't want to give you any wrong information. Uh, Dr. Burns, Feeling Happy. Oh, okay. It's the name of the book is Feeling Good Handbook by Dr. David Burns. It's a kind of a long book, but Dr. Burns teaches you a cognitive behavior therapy. What that is, is somebody's talking shit to you. Automatically, what you are start thinking is, well, this thing, this person thinks I'm stupid. This thing person, this person thinks. I'm not good enough. This person thinks that and that. That creates a certain emotion that correlates with that thought. That's how humans work. First you think, then you feel. And then you act on it. If somebody says, well, you're fucking stupid. And you think, oh, this guy thinks I'm stupid. He's attacking me. So my e e extreme emotion is 
to respond to that is anger and I'm gonna create a behavior to protect myself so I'm gonna get defensive and say fuck you versus huh this thing this guy thinks I'm stupid I wonder why he thinks that way so I should ask him that that automatically creates curiosity feeling curiosity rather than defensiveness rather than uh, lack of birth rather than any other emotions that kind of creates then you ask the person why do you think I'm stupid man and in th this does a couple of things it doesn't just lowers your reaction but also makes the other person think huh he didn't react he might actually be a genuine guy or he might actually want to know what I'm thinking so let's sit down and talk rather than fight because he didn't get a defensive uh, reaction out of you so you sit there and talk maybe you did something stupid we all do stupid shit at all times every day so for somebody to think we're, we did a stupid thing is normal if I sit you right next to Einstein and whatever you do more than likely gonna not look as smart as he is so yeah we're gonna look stupid that's normal but trying to establish a two-way communication with the person who's who's telling you something is a lot more productive and a lot more calming than you thinking that person thinks you are less that person thinks you are lacking something so if you work on that get that book read it and there's exercises in it it will help you tremendously with that always I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end all my videos like this. I actually love this because I actually do this without even knowing. When something good happens, look up and say, thank you, God. When something bad happens, look up and say, thank you for the lesson, God. You guys have a good one.